Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Calvas, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we have another very interesting topic and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker who is going to talk about fallacies of information system research, academic and industrial perspective. Today's world is the world of globalization and digitalization. We must know the role of information system appropriately and what are the misconceptions regarding it uh, in research, whether in academia or industry. So having appropriate knowledge about it will make it easy for us to understand and to make it possible. And for that matter, we have an expert with us in today's this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank all of us for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing such a wonderful platform. The aim of Calvas is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, suggestions, and tips which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as guest. He is well-known personality in academia and industry. He has a vast experience and we always see him on different platforms while contributing to the world. Above everything, he is always extends helping hand and ready to share his knowledge. So let me introduce him formally. He is a PhD business analytics in, and currently working as a postdoctoral researcher for artificial intelligence in healthcare at Florida Atlantic University. His core research area and expertise include business intelligence, machine learning, information system, big data mining, and natural language processing. He has published 25 research papers in reputed and top journals during his academic career. Besides this, he presented his research work in the world-renowned conferences in the field of information systems, such as HICSS USA, Smart Health PACIS, and CSWIM. Based on the earlier mentioned research performance, the Chinese Scholarship Council and Ministry of Education China awarded him the Outstanding Researcher Award in 2019. Last but not the least, he's a wonderful speaker, author, researcher, professional, and above everything, he's a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Dr. Adnan Muhammad Shah. Welcome to Carwas platform and thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Shah. Thank you, Dr. Heather. Uh, hi, good morning from United States. Um, as uh, Dr. Heather mentioned, my name is Adnan Shah. I'm currently working as a postdoctoral researcher at Florida Atlantic University. Uh, so today I'm bringing a, one of the uh, emerging and one of the hot uh, area and especially in the uh, business field that is the information systems so mm -hmm. information system is one of the emerging area not only uh, in the computer sciences but uh, in the business administration as well uh, mm -hmm. so one of the uh, that concern for the research especially who are working in the business uh, administration that how they can pursue their uh, their career in in the information systems uh, so here we are going to uh, provide some help. We are going to provide some uh, domain in the field of information system where the uh, researchers, they can pursue their career, especially in the field of information system research. So uh, regarding my specialty, uh, as Dr. Heather mentioned that uh, my specialties include the natural language processing, machine learning, uh, big data and business intelligence, information system, and especially uh, my most of the research that falls in the healthcare information technology and data mining. So uh, for uh, before moving further, uh, the outcome of this workshop will be uh, uh, will be to teach those students who want to pursue their career in the information system research, so that we should introduce uh, some emerging technologies and current trends in the information system and business analytics. In this workshop, we are going to introduce uh, some analytics tools that are important for the business intelligence and big data analytics. We will 
uh, also introduced some visualization technique, text mining technique, and especially one of the emerging areas that is called the web analytics or social media analytics uh, to download or to analyze the data from the Twitter or from different social media platforms like the Facebook, like the different communities uh, where uh, the, uh, the public, they post their opinions and there are like different analysis techniques we are going to discuss on that one. And also, we will also introduce that how to extract information for the business decision making process, especially in the field of marketing, in the field of the operation management as well, so that the uh, the uh, the companies they can utilize the results of those uh, 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 results of those uh, outcomes and uh, get the some uh, design some uh, policies that how to improve the uh, quality of the product and services and how to improve the sales performance as well. So the basic thing here in the information system, what it, it is very important that we should uh, first. Uh, recognize that what is the information systems? Actually, information system, that is the combination of the hardware and software, and also it depends upon the different operations management as well, where the data can be produced from different online forums, and we analyze that uh, data from those online forums, and then we, based on those analysis, we uh, we put some results that these results are important for the business decision making process. So one of the important thing in information system research, the researchers, they want that from where we should start this domain, where how we can work in this emerging field in the field of information system. So uh, for this system, we have one of the main thing that is a domain and problem identification. For example, if a researcher, he has background in the finance, so he can work on the financial information systems. If a researcher, he has the background in the HR, so he can work on the HR information systems. If a person who has the uh, domain in the marketing, so he can work in the marketing information system. So first of all, the domain identification is very important. Like me, I'm currently working in the marketing and in the healthcare. So I am working on both these domains parallelly, like health information system and marketing information system. That how hospitals can improve the service quality uh, so that they can boost their sales. So marketing has a vast implication, not only in the product, but also in the healthcare services as well. So I'm taking the marketing and health, uh, health services together. So it is very important the, that researchers should choose the domain of the information system that which domain they want to work on that one. The other thing that is that is the problem identification. When you choose your domain, either it can be the finance or either it can be the HR, either it can be the marketing. So the second thing is the problem identification that which problem that is exist in particular domain. So these two things are one of the important, important aspects for the information system researcher. One is the domain selection and other one is the problem identification. Like for me, when I started my PhD, so I don't know that from where I should start my information system research. So after advice from my, uh, 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 my PhD as advisor, I choose the... Uh, healthcare sector as my domain and regarding the healthcare sector where the problem exists so regarding the problem that is the how to improve the doctor and patient relationship how to improve the quality of care that is the problem identification so i work on the healthcare sector and then what i uh, identify the problem that is the improving the doctor and patient relationship so that's in this direction i pursue my information system career in this uh, healthcare direction. So information system research that consists of the three aspects. One is the first one is that is the big data. Big data actually, it is one of the novel and emerging field where any researcher 
they can analyze the online data or the data that is available in the warehouse or data that is available in the databases. They can analyze the real data and provide the analysis in the real time and also provide the real time responses. So information system research that consists of these three aspects. That is the big data, how to process the big data and what tools they should apply to analyze this big data. So entire information system, they, they rely on these three aspects, big data, how to process the big data and how to implement the different tools to analyze that big data. So those researchers who want to pursue their career in information system research, I strongly recommend them to study or to find the problems from these top journals, not limited to these, but these are one of the top journals in information system research, especially on the top, that is the information system research journal, one of the highly prestige and one of the top journals. Otherwise, that, that is a decision support system, expert system with application, MIS quarterly. So these are the top journals. If you want to pursue your, uh, your research in the uh, healthcare analytics, that is the Journal of Medical Internet Research. So these are the top journals. So if the researchers, they want to pursue their career in the information system research, I strongly recommend uh, to study the papers from those journals so that because these journals, they work on the real problem. So if the researchers they pursue, who want to pursue their career, information system research, they can easily find uh, the real problems from, this, uh, from these journals. So actually, one of the main thing is this, that researchers, they often confuse that, they often confuse about the big data, that what is the big data? Actually, when we talk about when we talk about our Facebook, when we talk about our Twitter, when we talk about the uh, the the uh, healthcare, there every day thousand of data has been generated, and these data that are uploaded up to the some databases of some data warehouses as well. So because that data, until unless we don't analyze that data, that data is nothing for us. So that is called the big data. So therefore, we need some techniques for that one. We need for some analytics tool for that one to analyze that data so that the that result should be applicable for the policy makers so that they can design some policies for particular uh, companies or for particular firms. That one. So big data analytics, that is one of the emerging areas and especially for those who want to pursue their career in information system research. And also, uh, most of the traditional analytics tools that may not be applicable to the big data. So in further slides, we are going to discuss what are the kinds of big data. So previously, there are the two types of data. One is the conventional data that we used to uh, collect the data using the uh, different uh, uh, questionnaires, different interviews. Uh, we uh, use those uh, tools to collect the data. The other thing is that is the big data. So big data, that has the two types. One is the quantitative data and other one is the qualitative data. So if you want to analyze the quantitative data, let me explain you that how to analyze the quantitative data and what is the quantitative data. Whenever you purchase a product or you visit some hospital or you visit some doctors, you post some ratings for that one. So in order to analyze that data, that quantitative data, for example, we have the five scale, the uh, any patient they post the uh, uh, rating in the form of one, two, three, four, five, or any customer they uh, uh, they post the rating in the form for the particular product. So that is the quantitative data analytics. And other one is the qualitative data. What is the qualitative data? Qualitative data is the patient or some customer they post the some comments on that uh, product or that services. So that is the qualitative data analytics as well. So there are different methods to 
analyze the quantitative data and qualitative data. If you want to analyze the quantitative data, you can use some available softwares like this. We have the SPSS and we have the Stata as well. You can use the quantitative data uh, uh, for the data analytics using this software. But there is some limitation in the quantitative data. One limitation is that that you cannot capture the emotional response of the customer by using the quantitative data. And you have the other limitation is this, the response is only limited to those five points ratings. But when you will move to the qualitative data, so customer can openly express his opinion about the particular product and services. So right now, the qualitative data analytics is one of the emerging field of the information systems. So if you want to analyze the qualitative data, here are the different uh, levels that you can use for the qualitative data analytics. Number one is the natural language processing that is called the text mining, in which you can apply the sentiment analysis of the patients or of the customers. You can use the different topic modeling approach, you can use the other different uh, uh, qualitative data analytics as well. So these are the different levels that you can use for qualitative data analytics. That is the natural language processing, scientific computing framework, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks. So these are the different levels. And one of the important thing is this, that for the qualitative data analytics, you the researchers they can use the multi-model approach as well. What is a multi-model approach? For example, when a patient, he or she visits some hospital, and after visit to that hospital, he or she posts the comments on that one. He or she not only posts the comments about the uh, his, his or her treatment experience, but also posts some uh, pictures about the hospital's environment, hospital, uh, 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 machinery as well. So multi-model approach is by combining the both the textual data and images data together to analyze the treatment experience. So this is also one of the emerging field that is called the multi-model approach in which the different types of data set can be combined together to give some uh, to uh, for the data analysis and to give some output as well. So as I mentioned before, regarding the quantitative data, there are the different matrices where the data can be stored as, as well. Regarding the qualitative data, different data set that is about the World Wide Web, social networks like the Facebook, Twitter that is available online as well. Regarding the uh, ordered data set, we have the different images. Particularly, let me explain to you, we have, uh, uh, a website that is called the yelp.com in which the patient or in which the customer they not only post the textual comments about the particular services but all the images as well so these are called the ordered uh, data analysis where the images and text can be combined together to and uh, for the data analysis as well and finally we have the other uh, multi uh, model uh, data set as well, like the video video data, where uh, the uh, researchers, they can combine the textual images and video data together to uh, give some output as well. So it depends upon the researcher skills that how much the researcher is competitive uh, in the programming, especially in the machine learning, so that they can combine these three modes to give some output as well. So these are the hierarchy of the business intelligence, especially the data mining application in the business intelligence. First one, that is a data source. For example, when we have the online database like the Facebook, like the Twitter, so that is the part of the data sources when someone posts the comments about some particular product or particular services 
that data is the raw data, not the clean data. So we have to apply the different data pre-processing technique on that one in the form of the natural language processing toolkit as well. After that, we have to apply the data exploration in the form of the different curing and reporting as well. And after that, we have to apply the different data mining technique on that one to for the information retrieval, information extraction. And then we can apply the data visualization that how the data, how the results looks like. And finally, that data can be, their results can be presented to the policy makers so that they can, uh, uh, they can make some decision based on those results. So this is the hierarchy of the uh, data mining and information system in business intelligence, where you can proceed your data analysis according to these uh, parameters. First, you have to search some data sources, you have to extract the data, then you have to apply the pre-processing technique, then you ha have to apply the different exploration technique, then you have to apply the information retrieval and visualization, and finally, the data can be presented for the decision-making purpose as well. So again, uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, this is the process of the machine learning uh, for the uh, different data sets as well. That is the input data where we pr provide pre-process the raw data and apply the different data mining technique on that one. And after that, we have to apply the information retrieval, the, like the post-processing post in the form of the information visualization. And finally, we have to extract the uh, in, uh, extract the different patterns that are important in particular business decision-making process. So uh, an information system researcher, they can proceed the data mining career in one of or one more than one of these fields as well. For example, if some researchers, they want to pro pursue their career in the pattern recognition, so they can move according to uh, uh, this career as well. If someone who want to pursue their career in the machine learning application in the healthcare or in the hospi hospitality sector, they can move in that one as well. So th these are the different branches where the researchers, they can move according to this pattern as well. So this is called the data mining, where we have to pursue different or we can proceed with different aspect of the data mining as well in the form of the pattern recognition, machine learning, database technology, and algorithm applications as well. Uh, let me explain to you that how our analysis works, especially in the information system research or in the theme of uh, or in the field of the business intelligence or in the field of the healthcare intelligence or in the field of the financial intelligence as well. First of all, this is our data source. We get extract the data from these data sources, like uh, for example, we have the Twitter data. Our Twitter data has been stored over here. Then we extract the data from the different online sources and apply the different pre-processing technique. Because as I mentioned earlier, these online databases, they don't have the clean data we have to apply the pre-processing technique on that one. Because if we don't apply the pre-processing technique on the raw data set, we don't have the good results from that. And when we apply the pre-processing technique on that one, we load the data into the different data warehouse uh, data mark. Then finally, we apply the different data mining technique or data mining tools on that one like we apply the different machine learning algorithm on that. For example, if we, uh, uh, if we are analyzing the customer sentiment, so we apply the sentiment analysis that one. If we want to apply, if we want to extract different factors, we can apply the topic modeling technique on that one. Or if we uh, want to analyze the images data, we can apply the different image processing techniques on that one. So these are the process where the, our data can flow in the uh, form of the business intelligence as well. In information system research, we have several limitations as well. Let me explain to you, particularly in my domain, like the healthcare analytics. 
in the healthcare, one of the main limitation is that the legal and ethical issues. If you want to scrap the data from different physician rating websites, so until unless you will not get the permission from those web developers or from those owner of the websites, so they can sue you or they can uh, take legal action against you. And the data may not be freely available. So the legal and ethical issues is one of the hot uh, issue in the uh, information system research. And also one of the other issues that is the data quality issue. As I mentioned before, because we have the raw data that is available online and especially unstructured data that is available online, if we don't apply the uh, pre-processing technique on that one, so we have the data quality issue uh, that may not give the excellent results uh, during the data analysis. So these are the main issues, particularly in the big data analytics as well. As I mentioned before, uh, particularly uh, uh, that in the data pre-processing, these are the several steps that is very important. That is the data cleaning, data integrations, particularly combining the data from multiple uh, databases, data transformation to normalize the data and data reduction. Because we have the a lot of the raw data that is uh, available uh, in a very high volume. But the thing is this, what is the uh, some what is the data that is really beneficial for us. So the data re reduction is a technique where we can uh, uh, get that data that is particularly beneficial for our analysis as well. And data discretization, for example, if we have the, uh, uh, after the pre-processing, we apply the data discretization technique to convert into the numerical format as well. After uh, pre-processing technique, then we have to develop, validate, and test our model. Let me explain to you that what is the de uh, model development and what is the prediction. For example, we have the uh, cricket, cricket World Cup in 2019. So when you see there, there are some tickers over that one that the win prediction of this team is that percent win prediction of that team is this person win prediction of that team is this person win prediction of that team is this person these all prediction is based on the previous uh performance of the teams especially during the world cup and whatever the uh, data that involves behind this team, these teams, that is all based on the big data analytics, because that prediction is based on the applying the different tools in the form of machine learning. Then they predict that this team will win the World Cup. But there are some errors on that one. It may not be necessary that uh, that particular team can win. Uh, particular team can win that World Cup. So. If we have the good algorithm design for our big data in the form of that uh, Cricket World Cup uh, data, so we have the good prediction for that. Similarly, when we compare the win probability of the uh, two teams in the form of uh, uh, Arsenal and, and Dynamo, so here we can see that the based on the previous results, the win probability can be uh, uh, obvious on that one that which team will win th that situation. So in both these examples, all those analysis is based on the machine learning and based on the big data analytics. Because when you see some cricket match, so you can see on the real time that this particular team is going to win that match. So what's the logic behind that one that is the big data and machine learning where you can get the real response or real results from that uh, 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 for that particular situation so if you want to pursue your career in the information system research you have to work on these five models 
so it depends upon you either which particular uh, models do you want to choose for example like the personalized model you want to choose for example retrospective model you want to choose for example prevention model you want to choose for example prediction model you want to choose prediction model is like as i mentioned before the prediction uh, the particular team that is going to win the world cup or not prevention model is all about the uh, the particular league has very high implication in the healthcare sector as well uh, like uh, if uh, the data is saying this one how we can prevent this disease by uh, analysis of that data and streaming model it consists of the audio data or video data you can analyze these data to uh give some uh, output from that one so it all depends upon the researchers they that which models they want to choose according to the particular categories if for example for me because my uh, most of the research that belongs to healthcare sector so i mostly use the prediction and the prevention models that during my research So these are the some examples of uh, prediction models as well, uh, especially that has been used in the diagnostic uh, of different diseases as well. Uh, for example, currently we are working on the uh, uh, an IT-based decision support system at Florida Atlantic University for the lung cancer treatment over here. So we are using the prediction model that how to improve the uh, uh, how to improve the existing results for the lung cancer patients so that uh, their treatment decision making process ability can be enhanced by using the existing data so here we are using the prediction models to, for the data analysis we are currently uh, uh, analyzing the data from different online communities like the cancer.org reddit.com these are the uh, one of the big sources for the big data so we are analyzing that data to extract the different factors that are important for the lung cancer decision making process so you can see here that how the information system research that combine the business analytics with the healthcare analytics and healthcare analytics with the other diseases as well so this is the combination of the different domains and different fields not only the information system research that rely on the single domain you can combine the different domains together to give some excellent uh, output as well. So let me explain to you further that what are the sources and application of the big data. Uh, particularly in the marketing environment, uh, researchers can work on one or two of the, those hot fields, especially the consumer engagement online. We have the different chatbots as well we have the different online reviews as well information asymmetry is one of the hot research area uh, researchers can work on that one online trust is very important so these are the uh, online reviews uh, particularly in the uh, uh, hotel reviews or the product review the researchers can work on that one and recently in the business analytics domain the cyber security that is one of the hot field that is uh, uh, researchers can work on that one that how uh, researchers can work on the implication of cyber security in the business intelligence that you know we have the a lot of uh, de business data that is available online but the security information security is one of the main issues in the business analytics domain as well so researchers can work on that one uh, uh, so that they can produce an excellent results apart from this researchers can work on several other domain like the uh, smart cities as well uh, like uh, the uh, uh, previously uh, we have the uh, implication of big data in the our judicial system or the court system as well supply chain management uh, fashion industry has one of the important aspect in the form of the big data analytics as well we uh, like other thing is this like the public uh, uh public management is one of the hot field that researchers can work on that one so these are the different domains that uh, researchers can work in this domain to get the to extract the knowledgeable or extract the important output as well so when you see that uh every different age of people 
people having the different ages, they have the different consumption experience. So based on the consumption experience, they post some online reviews on uh, about the particular product or particular uh, particular services. So researchers can analyze that big data to to analyze the consumption characteristics of the different age group. So this is one of the important implications as well. Apart from this, we have the different uh, brands. Uh, for example, pizza brand. For example, we have the different Airbnb, where IKEA, where the online reviews are available. So researchers can uh, analyze the data from these online databases uh, to get some output or uh, for their research purpose as well. Apart from this, there are some other uh, apps as well. May, may may not be uh, every app is in, uh, available in English. So uh, according to their domain, researchers can focus on these uh, uh, on these apps to get the data from that one and to analyze that data for the business intelligence purpose as well. So these are the uh, different data uh, sources and uh, where the researchers can get the data and also analyze that data for the business intelligence purpose as well. And especially uh, the people who are born after 1990, they have the different consumption experience. So they generate a lot of big data according to their lifestyles. So researchers can analyze the, can also focus on the people who born after 1990s for the data analysis that how their consumption experience can be changed from other people that uh, born be before 1990 as well. This is also the consumption experience for the uh, uh, data analysis and for the uh, uh, for the uh, different lifestyle people where uh, the different age groups or different people, they have the different backgrounds as well. Let me move towards the uh, high tech product as well, especially in the healthcare sector where we have the different devices in the form of the Fitbit as well, in the form of the Google glasses, uh, that is the source of the big data uh, where the uh, the data can be produced from these devices as well. Let me move towards the uh, some applications of the big data, especially in the healthcare sector. Let me explain to you this example. Uh, when the iPhone, uh, that is, I think so, iPhone uh, 12 or iPhone 13 that is launched in Beijing. So you can see here during the launch of that, uh, uh, a launch of that product uh, you can see here there are a lot of people they are just coming to that mall of america to see that uh, that iphone uh, iphone uh, new iphone version so here in that mall there are the different location based devices as well where the uh, that devices they capture the behavior or they capture the moment of the that customer according to the his for example if the customer he want to move towards the rack one so that devices that capture the behavior of that particular customer so that devices or that motion sensor that is also the one of the biggest sources for the uh, capturing the big data so researchers can approach to uh, those uh, database managers to get the data from them and for the uh, to analyze that data and produce some uh, good results so that the uh, uh, the uh, the owner of that mall they can uh, uh, and they can work on that one to uh, to boost their sales performance also there are also some other aspect as well uh, uh, like I, as i mentioned here you can see here the a lot of crowd they are coming to uh, see the iPhone X when that was launched in Beijing and iPhone X that was launched in New York. So these are all source of the big data because when they enter the mall, there are a lot of devices. They can uh, just record their uh, moments in, inside the mall. They record their facial expression in, in inside the mall. So that is the uh, uh, that is a big source of the big data where the researchers can work on that one for the uh, policy implementation purpose. 
also uh, one of the biggest source of the big data on the Beijing road, uh, there are a lot of bicycles have different companies they, they that are working in the Beijing. So here uh, they have the location based services. So companies, they record the locations and different patterns of the riders so that they can uh, uh, they can improve their quality of the services according to uh, 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 the riders behavior as well. So researchers can work on that data so that they can improve the uh, the uh, quality of that uh, uh, services as well. So this is one of the another example of the big data, particularly in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the bicycle or in the form of the ride as well. So finally, I want to move towards the application of information system research in the healthcare. That is one of the emerging field of the information system uh, application in the healthcare. Healthcare is different from the other uh, services like the hotel and like other sectors or like in the product as well. One of the main reason is that in healthcare, there's a lot of information asymmetry. Particularly in healthcare, uh, it is possible that a doctor can suggest an overstay to the patients. A doctor know more than his patients. So in that case, there are a lot of chances that doctor can deceive his patient in the form of making money by suggesting them overstays as well or over prescription as well. So healthcare is one of the important aspect of the information system research due to the high information asymmetry as compared to the hoteling sector or as compared to the uh, to the products as well. Because in that case, the patient, uh, he cannot judge the quality of the health services even after the consumption uh, or after visiting the doctor as well. So for the researchers, they have the very good opportunity to work on the healthcare sector uh, particularly in the form of the healthcare analytics as well. So healthcare analytics, it is very important that we should understand the what is the healthcare analytics. Healthcare analytics actually is the uh, systematic use of the data so that the different patterns can be extracted for the business purposes or the decision-making purposes so that when the results come, the policy maker should plan, manage, measure, and learn about that particular service as well. So by using the big data analytics, the uh, policy makers, they can improve the clinical outcomes as well, and also uh, improve, improve the disease management and the wellness of the patients as well. So there are the three perspectives the researchers can use in the healthcare analytics, that is the descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. As I mentioned before about these three perspectives, that which model that depends upon the researcher, they want to choose from these three uh, models uh, they want to apply for the uh, big data in healthcare sector as well. So why we should care about the healthcare? Because healthcare is one of the important thing for everybody, not only for the for the uh, human being, but for the uh, for the students as well, for the teachers as well, for the parents as well. So it is very important uh, to analyze the data so that we should give some concrete results for the uh, for the well being of the people. So that's why healthcare is very important. Because if you uh, don't have the good health, you cannot be productive. You cannot uh, feel well. You will be stressed, and you will be worried about the different things. You don't have. You will not have the good lifestyle. So that's why healthcare is very important. And particularly when we move forward, uh, hospitals are one of the big sources for the healthcare big data. Because every patient's every patient. Uh, record that has been recorded on the computer in the form of electronic health records, every medicine that has been recorded in the hospital computer on that one. Daily 
uh, hundreds of people they visit different hospitals so hospital is one of the uh, great source of uh, big data especially in the healthcare so uh, again healthcare that is these uh, for, for the academic purpose we have the uh, in the healthcare we have the different technologies we have the different stages where we can work on that one for the disease management and wellness of the people so that we can improve the outcomes for the patient well-being and the disease management so we can further we can see here when we particularly during the covid 19 scenario many people they visit their hospitals to get treatment or for some testing purpose so you can see here there are a lot of uh, there are sensors are involved in the hospital they they capture the uh, facial expression of the patient as well so you can see here these hospitals are the one of the big uh, source of the big data analytics they produce the big data in the form of the facial expression movement of the patient as well or in the form of electronic health record when tsunami of the COVID-19 that come over here we can see here a lot of people they uh, visit to hospitals to get treatment so already a lot of data that is available in the with the hospital so that if researchers they want to work on the healthcare analytics they can choose uh, uh, this domain to work on that how to improve the quality of care how to improve the patient well-being and how to uh, how to improve the doctor and patient relationship also when a particular doctor he or she want to uh, examine some patient so google glass that is one of the important source of the big data where every aspect every part of the examination that that are recorded in the form of the database so if some researchers who want to um, uh, who want to work on that one particularly big data in healthcare they they can work on that one uh, different the, these are the different domain like the information security in healthcare they can work on the telemedicine they can enhance the uh, they can work on the enhancing the patient engagement uh, disease management also the supply chain uh, management of different uh, healthcare products medical imaging uh, real time uh, disease diagnosis so these are the different applications of the big data in healthcare where the researchers can work on that one so you can see here these are the different sources of the healthcare uh, from where the healthcare big data can be generated in the form of online communities in the form of like as i mentioned before i'm currently working on the two online communities that is the reddit.com and cancer.org uh, so uh, researchers can work on, on these online patient communities to uh, get, uh, to get the data also patient can, uh, researchers can work on the different variable technologies mobile apps to get the data also researchers can work on the different rating websites like there are different rating websites like red md's uh, uh, healthgrades.com uh, i want great care that uh, researchers can work on that one for the data analysis as well as i mentioned before these are the different sensors like the fitbit that like uh, mobile apps that are available online where uh, the big data can be generated by using the uh, these application and different sensor as well so uh, these uh, i have several uh, research contributions where the researchers can uh, go through these papers uh, so that they can better uh, judge the uh, they, they have the better idea that how to pursue their career information system research particularly in the healthcare so that is one of the uh, first paper that uh, was published in the journal of biomedical informatics here we combine the different online information signals to improve the sales performance of the physicians so here we use the data from the healthgrades.com we uh, download the different online reviews and also the physician information and then apply the centric computing framework over here by using the uh, semantic parsing and by using the dependence tree by using the two types of si signals by using the system generated signals in the form of the uh, physician reputation and patient generated signals in the form of the online uh, patient reviews that how these two uh, 
information signals that come that can be combined together to improve the physician economic returns so this is the uh, we apply the sentiment analysis technique in that one this sentiment analysis based on these 16 types of 16 different emotions because emotions is not only the negative and positive they're also the levels of different emotions like a person who is negative uh, emotion that consists of the anger and uh, uh, annoyed or uh, uh, different uh, either he's feeling the sad or either he's feeling the disgusting either he's feeling the fear so these are the different emotions so based on the di discrete emotions we apply the sentiment analysis technique to uh, analyze the system generated information and uh, patient generated information to uh, uh, to analyze, analyze that how to improve the physician sales performance as i mentioned before that we have the different types of data so this paper that was published in the journal of ambient intelligence and humanized computing in which we analyze the patient opinion to evaluate the quality of care by using the deep learning approach so here we use the multimodal approach in which we analyze the images and textual data together because whenever patient he or she visits some doctors he posts or he or she posts some uh, not only the textual reviews but also the images of his treatment or her treatment experience as well so here we crawl the online reviews in the form of images and uh, in the form of uh, the textual data then apply the pre-processing on both images and textual data as well then we extract the different features and finally we apply the future uh, we apply the fusion in the form of the soft softmax classifier and analyze that either the quality of the healthcare in particular uh, particular reviews are the high or or low so this is the uh, our contribution um, based on the multimodal approach we apply the multi layer perceptron in that one by using the back propagation model as well that was another a contribution that is the multi-model approach to predict the strength of the doctor-patient relationship as the customer and the mm -hmm. seller relationship is very important so similarly it is very important that we should analyze the doctor and patient relationship so uh, again we use here the uh, again we analyze the textual and the images data set that how we can analyze these images and textual reviews to analyze the doctor patient relationship so here uh, we apply the long short term memory algorithm on that one and finally on the textual data and the convolution neural network on the images data and finally we apply the softmax classifier to uh, get the final output in the form of the doctor patient relationship so you can see here so the doctors and patient who have the pleasant uh, experience who have the pleasant facial sentiments they have the good uh, higher relationship with the uh, with, with their doctors but those patients who have the sad images they have the uh, they their the quality of the doctor patient relationship was low so uh, this is one of the another contribution that how to evaluate the physician healthcare quality by using the textual data set uh that was published in the quality and quantity so here we analyze the different uh online textual reviews from the i want great care.org websites and then we apply the sentiment analysis and topics for modeling technique on that one to extract the different factors that are important particularly in the in the uh, uh, patient decision making process to evaluate the physician service quality uh these are also one of the uh, paper that we apply the topic modeling and sentiment analysis technique on the online doctor reviews and th that one so after applying the topic modeling technique we apply the dynamic topic modeling technique over here where we use the three times longitudinal data sets and and, and extract the different factors that are important in the uh, patient treatment experience during the covid 19 outbreak so these are the real data that we extract and analyze during uh, uh, during our this uh, research contribution.
So this is uh, another research contribution. Uh, here we again apply the setting computing framework and digital topic modeling to analyze the uh, patient satisfaction and dissatisfaction upon the physician. We use the real data over here. And uh, by using the real data, we extract those factors that are important for the patient satisfaction and patient dissatisfaction so that the physician, they can work on those factors uh, so that th they can improve the quality of care based on those factors. This is the LDA uh, latent direction latent allocation uh, that I mentioned before we apply on this model previously on that one. So uh, finally, uh, this is our research contribution seven in which uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, especially the early wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, we apply the topic modeling and sentiment analysis technique uh, to analyze the public sentiments because during the early wave of COVID-19, uh, there are a lot of rumors about that one. So we analyze the patient sen uh, public sentiments that what, what are those factors that were important during the early wave of the COVID-19 as well. So that was published in International Journal of Medical Informatics. So researchers who want to pursue their career in the healthcare analytics, I will share these uh, uh, slides in, uh, with the uh, Dr. Heather as well. Uh, they can uh, go through these slides if they, uh, uh, they are interested in that healthcare analytics as well. Finally, the project we are working over uh, at Florida Atlantic University, that is the designing an IT-based, information technology-based decision support system for the lungs cancer patient. So we are here uh, based on the real data that is available on uh, different cancer, uh, different uh, patient online communities like cancer.org or reddit.com. We are extracting different factors that are important for the lungs cancer patient decision making process. And both based on those factors, we will going to we will design a mobile health app that assists those patients for their decision making process that how to choose a good oncologist because for the uh, for patient who suffered from the uh, lungs cancer, it is very important that they should treat by a best doctor. So this is uh, our uh, current project that we are working on the mobile based health recommendation system for the lungs cancer patient as well. So this will be the uh, proposed app feature that we are uh, we will embed in that our mobile health app as well. So based on those. Uh, uh, factors. Uh, we are currently in the process of the designing our algorithm. So finally, uh, uh, and, uh, I advise those researchers who want to pursue their career in information. This is one of the important things. Uh, if someone who has the background of the HR, they can work on the HR analytics. If someone who has the background with the finance, finance, they can work on the investment behavior. That is one of the uh, research. Who want to uh, put their career in the marketing, in marketing information, that is one of the marketing analytics, they can work on that one. So these are the fields where uh, the world will, uh, in the field of artificial intelligence, the world will proceed in the 15 to 20 years. Uh, a lot of thousands of job opportunities available in the market. So I strongly recommend uh, researchers to pursue their career, although uh, it's a little tough uh, for those researchers who don't have the computer science background, but still uh, they can work on that one. And I am hopeful that day by day they can work on that one and they will get uh, expertise in particular these fields. So that's all from my side. Uh, if uh, anyone has any questions, uh, it is strongly, uh, I will strongly encourage to ask questions about this emerging field. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Adnan. And it was really a great presentation followed by the great content which you were showing. And I was so much uh, engaged in your presentation. It was so nice. And the way you explained was so superb. And I love the way you started it from the domain and then the 
domain identification and problem identification and then you went on the uh, top journals for literature review and then you related to the uh, big data which was very interesting and then you showed the qualitative and quantitative perspective how it is related to the decision making and implications and more interestingly i love the way you relate all the things to the big data that how it is more important and how it is uh, going to take us to the new level and uh, the applications of the big, uh, big data and then you showed your own research contribution uh, contribution which was really very great to see that yes you people are contributing and uh, the way you are doing it is so fantastic uh, congratulations what you, what you have done and uh, best wishes for the uh, upcoming projects and uh, it's really great to see uh, that people uh, like you are doing so wonderful job thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation uh, if you love me should i ask with uh, should i start the first question please yeah sure sure dr heather okay. uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, Dr. Adnan, the first question is very important and they want to have your opinion on that as an expert. They, they want to ask that, uh, 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 Dr. Adnan, please guide in the field of MIS, what approach of research do you find yourself more into, the qualitative or quantitative and why in brief? Yes, please. Uh, excellent question. Uh, Dr. Heather, as I mentioned before in my earlier slides, that uh, we have the two kinds of data in the information system research. One is the quantitative data, another one is the qualitative data. Uh, actually, the most of the information system research uh, researchers, they want to pursue their career in the qualitative data analytics. Because big data is also the quantitative data and also the qualitative data, but we have the limitation in the quantitative data. Because in the quantitative data, we can only just, uh, for example, we have the online ratings. So our response is just based on those five points. But we cannot capture the inner feelings, inner sentiments, or inner opinions of the, pay or, uh, of the customers. So for the researchers who want to pursue their career in MIS, I strongly recommend them to pursue their career in the qualitative big data analytics. because a lot of Amazon or like uh, there are different uh, high tech companies as well. They most they prefer uh, for the qualitative data analytics. Although there is little, uh, there is some challenges behind that one because uh, researchers they have uh, uh, they have to learn some programmings or like some uh, uh, qualitative tools on that one. But this is all about the future. Because if they learn from this thing from the start, so this will definitely help for 15 to 20 years because the future is all about this big data. So I strongly recommend that one. Yes, start from the quantitative data analytics because it is it will be difficult for, for a lay person to start uh, from the qualitative data analytics. Yes, first start from the quantitative data analytics. At least they have some expertise on the quantitative data and then move towards the qualitative data analytics. So this yeah. will be the future for that, uh, uh, for every researcher in the field of the information systems. It's very nicely said, Dr. Adnan. Thank you very much for guiding our young researchers. Uh, another very interesting question. Uh, and I think a lot of people have this kind of concern. They want to ask that Dr. Adnan, please guide. Uh, what do you think about the security of uh, information processing in the big data databases systems? Yes, uh, Dr. Heather, uh, I'm here in the US. Uh, you know, uh, one of the emerging field that is the cyber security or information security. So now the data is available, but the thing is this, there are a lot of concern for the information security. Okay, for example, like we are uh, uh, scrapping the data from the different uh, uh, cancer websites like the cancer.org or reddit.com. So this, uh, the web managers, they want the security of that, uh, that, that information. So as I mentioned before, that the in information system research, the cyber security and information security, that are the 
one of the hot field in, in, information system research. So I strongly uh, recommend the researchers to uh, pursue their careers also in the cybersecurity, particularly in the business intelligence, because in the business intelligence, information security has a very bigger role in that one. So uh, thousands of opportunities, thousands of scholarships are available in the uh, universities are looking for the people to come here uh, and join this uh, uh, this program. So they are offering th those programs uh, uh, so that they can train the people in the uh, cyber security or information security domain. So now you that's all uh, all depends upon the researchers that uh, how they want to pursue that one. So the after fifteen till fifteen to twenty years this. Uh, cyber security, information security, and uh, information system research, uh, thousands of opportunities will be there. So I strongly recommend researchers to please pursue their career in this domain. Yes, very nicely said. Thank you once again, Dr. Arnan, for a wonderful answer. Uh, there is one another question. There is a kind of uh, that gentleman seems to be in puzzle. So we need uh, to have your expert opinion on that, uh, even though it is so naive question, but uh, in order to remove the uh, rumor, uh, the doubt from that student, uh, they want to ask that Dr. Adnan, please uh, have your thoughts on, do systems have a purpose inherently built in them? Our purpose is fundamentally a human construct and human just assign uh, a purpose to the systems yes please actually uh, as far as i understand the question the system is nothing without the human being because it depends upon the human being that uh, how efficient he or she can design the algorithm because a system can cannot do anything by itself we have to train the system we have to uh, design an algorithm. So if we have the efficient algorithm, if we have the efficient algorithm for the specific analysis, so definitely system will follow that one. So system is nothing without the human being. Human being will have to drive the systems. So it all depends upon the researchers, how he can design a particular algorithm efficiently. And uh, definitely whatever uh, the researcher, he, he or she code that system, he will definitely get excellent output. Yes, very nicely said. Thank you very much. Uh, the reason why I asked this question because uh, that gentleman has uh, uh, emphasized that please ask the uh, respected guest speaker regarding this question because what you say have a lot of impact uh, and you are the expert and what you have said is really a wonderful answer for them. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Adnan, for such a wonderful presentation, wonderful content and uh, energy. I, I love the way you are explaining the things because uh, the great wisdom and the great knowledge you have uh, was very much apparent and uh, we could see and we could felt that. Uh, thank you once again. And Dr. Adnan, in the last, we ask our each and every guest that what is your message to the world as a teacher, researcher, trainer, learner, professional, and educator? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Heather, uh, for providing me this opportunity. Uh, particularly, uh, uh, let me tell you that about this emerging field uh, to share my ideas with the young graduates or young researchers as well. My message to the uh, those researchers who want to pursue their career uh, in some new fields, uh, I always suggest those uh, researchers to always uh, follow the new trends because if they follow the old trends, uh, market will not accept you. So as I mentioned before, that these new trends like the artificial intelligence, because because previously. Uh, believe me, we before uh, starting my PhD, I have no idea about the information system research. I have no idea the role of artificial intelligence in the marketing. I have no idea about the digital health. But when our supervisor or PhD advisor, he or she guided us that how to proceed in this novel field, then right now we came to know, yes, these are the emerging trends that uh, 
uh, that we are thankful to our PhD advisor that he, uh, they guided us like this emerging field. So please, uh, if you want to pursue your PhD or your master's, go for the emerging trends. If you just follow those traditional trends, believe me, it is the waste of time. Follow the emerging trends, what are the emerging research areas, and especially the journals that I recommended uh, to those researchers. So when the, these researchers or these, uh, they will graduate fr from a particular university, thousands of opportunities are available, thousands of opportunities, thousands of scholarships are available for these particular domains at now. So again, I just uh, suggest all young graduates or young researchers to please follow these emerging trends or emerging research areas. Yeah, thank you very much, wonderful. And that's the beauty of the expert that they make things very easy for the people to understand it. And thank you very much, even I learned a lot about the information system research and particularly the academic and industrial perspective very nicely. And I love the way you explain your own contribution, which is very great. Uh, we are so proud of you. Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, to the audience, I would say that do learn it properly as the Dr. Adnan Muhammad Shah has already demonstrated. So we will definitely and we are strongly recommending you that to follow our distinguished guest speaker through his research work and you can email him for future learning and guidance. He's very generous and always ready to help the people. So that is all we have time for today. Thank you once again, Dr. Adnan Muhammad Shah. And I would also like to thank our audience who join us. If you have any additional questions about the information shared today, please email to us or you can connect with the speaker directly through his email or social media. Thank you all for your support and liking our sessions. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session and until next session, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.